Hey everybody, thanks for joining me here today. This is Nicole with Topaz, and today's session is all about creating beautiful blur and bokeh effects using Topaz lens effects. Very excited to be featuring this program this month during our webinar sessions. It is one of the most versatile tools in the Topaz lineup, and we don't discuss it too often. So we're going to be showing all of the creative uses and um, more than that, useful uses <laughs> of this program uh, over the next few weeks. Today, we're going to be basically a simple way to create realistic blur and bokeh effects. Uh, whether we're using a very simple method or a little bit more complex method, actually creating unique depth maps for our images, it is very easy to create these creative or realistic blur and bokeh effects. That's what we're going to be focusing on today. All right, with that, let's go ahead and get started. And the first thing I'm going to do is show you a few before and afters, and I'll tell you which method was actually used to create the type of blur that you'll be looking at. So this first one, uh, let's look at this before and after. Here's the original image. It's a very simple blur, and it's called uh, I used bokeh center focus to achieve this, and it was achieved in a very, very short amount of time. This image here, here's before. This also used the center focus bokeh effect, where you can choose your center very quickly, create your blur, and then I also took it into the toy camera effect, so I'll go ahead and go over this complete workflow for you. Here we're starting to get a little bit more creative with the blur, and that's actually called creative blur <laughs> effect is what I used. Here's the before. I wanted to really focus in on this middle tulip, and I used something called creative blur. It's very similar, or you can get similar effects sometimes to a lens baby type of uh, blur. This is the same creative uh, blur, and we'll be going over this image. Here's before, here's after. I do have to say I popped this into Topaz Adjust just to work on that localized exposure of the horse's face. And once I opened that up, I then took it into lens effects. And we'll talk about the workflow where lens effects fits within other programs as well. This next one is where the blur becomes a little bit more, um, where I actually went in and, and did more than just the center focus bokeh. This one actually used the um, selective bokeh effect, where you can go in and you can create a depth map. And we'll be going over this image as well. Here's before, here's after. This image also used the bokeh selective effect, where I went in and created a depth map myself. Here's before. Here's after. Lastly, I want to show you a couple examples where you really get to this characteristics and the aesthetic quality of the bokeh effects that you can get within this program. So here's before. You can see all of these highlights coming off of the water. You can really control that when you have when you're working with an effect that gives you the options of using lens characteristics. You can control control the shape, the um, smoothness of the blur, uh, whether or not you have a circular versus a hexagon like you have here within this particular image. In this particular image, as you can see, we have these circle bokeh effects going on in the image. And I wanted to show you that you have several options. Actually, and this isn't circle. Let me scroll in so you can kind of see. Looks like it's a maybe six-sided shapes going on here, but I also have one that's just circles and a much more smoother blur. So you have lots of different ways to control that blur and control those shapes within the program as well. So we'll be going over or all of these things here today. Let's go ahead and start over here with the bouquet image here, and I'll just show you how quickly it is to get it, just to start off with your blur. And this is really emphasizing, this is, the center focus bokeh effect is really good for emphasizing your focal points very quickly and simply, especially if you're just 
have a center focus or a very simple uh, focus, focal point area that you don't really um, care to get completely exact. So I'm just going to take this into Topaz Labs, Topaz Lens Effects. All right, great. Now, if you're unfamiliar with Topaz Lens Effects, the program itself is basically a virtual bag of different types of camera lenses, filters, and different effects. And there are so many different things that we have going on here. We have different blur op options, different filters, all of these things, a fog filter, diffusion filter, UV haze, a warmth filter. Then we come down to our lenses where you can do the creative blur, which we'll talk about here today, but also fisheye and motion. Then just effects as well, geometric distortion to help with um, converging lines and architecture, things like that. So lots of possibilities here within this program. That's why I call it one of our most versatile programs. But it is set up very similarly to the rest of our programs, where you have your effects and presets here over on the left to start off with. In this particular one, this is kind of our one of the first interfaces that we brought into this particular interface design, but it's not our latest design. So we still have our uh, preset preview up here on the top, and if you want to get rid of that, you can hide that with this button. You have the option to save, delete, import, or export your user-made presets. Within your menu, you'll find different preferences, like turning your tooltips on or um, enabling the auto-updater. In this middle section, you have the ability to look at before and after by clicking on these two tabs in the upper left. You also can do so with your space bar, your left mouse button. If you want to look at the before and after in a split screen mode, you can do so by clicking on this top right icon to see your before and let's go to something where we're actually seeing a different, let's go to a, there we go. This is a toy effect called Awesomeness One. <laughs> All right, so you see your before on your left, after on your right, so you can see where you started off with. If you want to get back to the main view, you can do so here. And again, you can look at the before and after but with your space bar. Up on the top right, you'll actually have your preview navigator, where in most things, such as our selective, or actually let's go to our center focus one, you can uh, scroll in or out um, and see your image at 100% versus 50% or, or so on. You have the ability to undo, redo, take snapshots, so you'll find all of your adjustments. Now, this is the only program that we have where as you go from one effect to the other, this right-hand side is going to change and give you the adjustment specific to this type of effect that you've chosen. So this one is camera pinhole. So if I wanted to do something that has blur, dark edges, heavy, I'll do that. And I have all the changes over here to work with that a little bit more. Let's say I want to go into my camera toy. So this is going to simulate some toy camera effects. You have your presets over here. Let's maybe go to soft and dreamy, one of my favorites. And then you have all of the adjustments specific to the toy camera. So don't be surprised when these change with each uh, different effect that you choose. You have the ability to apply each effect as you're working because we have so many different effects for you to choose from. We don't want you to have to get out of the interface if you want to keep working within Topaz Lens Effects. So just press the Apply button and then continue working. But just know that if you want to get back to your original image, if you've already pressed Apply, you're going to have to cancel out and actually get back into the image. All right, so that's a brief overview of Topaz Lens Effects. Now let's talk about blur. So the top three effects, your Bokeh Center Focus, Bokeh SLR Lens, and Bokeh Selective are where we're going to be spending a lot of time today, as well as the fil uh, Lens Creative Blur. For this particular one, I used Bokeh Center Focus. For Focus, you have over on the right-hand side your Bokeh Adjustment. And People are already, I'm sure, asking, isn't it bouquet? I think, I, according to the dictionary, it can be pronounced either way. <laughs> so I started calling it bouquet a while ago, and I just went with it. But uh, it is bouquet as well. 
Uh, lens characteristics is your second option here, and we'll look at all of that. We do have some presets here for you that are going to give you different types of blur. So for this one, I think I chose extra, extra creamy. So I, when I did that, I have a very smooth blur that came into the image. By default, your center point is going to be in directly in the middle of your image, and it just so happens that that's where I want it to be on this particular image. But if you don't want it to be there, you can come into your bokeh adjustments on the right, click your effect center, and choose your effect center. And you'll see that your um, will move around wherever you choose your effect center to be. So I'm going to put it right back there on the flower. Actually, I want it to go down just a little bit more. There we go. And then I can work with the actual blur itself. You can choose how big of a focal point you'd like by choosing focus width or focus height. So you can have a very small focal point or a larger one. The blur obviously is very high for this particular blur setting, so I'm just going to take it down. Pick something that works for me. A little bit more realistic. And then you have the transition. Let me take this blur map all the way back up so we can check out the transition. Basically, when your transition is at zero, you're going to have a very hard line between, or hard transition between your um, focal point and the actual blur. As you take your transition up, the transition between those two areas becomes softer and softer and you'll see that happen as you take that up. So I'm going to go ahead and do that, and I'm also going to take my blur mount back down. And there you go. Very quick way to get a center point focus. Here's before, here's after. Again, before and after. We're going to be talking about the lens characteristics here in just a second in another um, option. I just wanted to show you this more simple version of different images so you can see how easy it is to get this single focal point um, uh, blur. Okay, so just like that we, we worked on that. I believe I also took this into, I'm going to go ahead and apply. I believe I also took this into um, just uh, some had adjustments. This is just some general adjustments and I wanted to um, add just a little bit of saturation. little bit of saturation boost. Here's before, here's after. And then you can come in and work with your brightness, contrast, shadow, and highlights as well. But I'm going to go ahead and press OK and take a look at what we just did. Here's before, here's after. This really draws you right into those flowers. Now let's take a look at this kitten image. Here's the before image and here's after. I thought he looked so cute, but with all of the distraction of the leaves and everything like that, I really wanted to take that into lens effects and see if I could uh, get a more stylized image with heavier blur around there and really just focus in on his face. So that's where we're trying to go with the image. I'm going to just make a quick background copy, go up to Filter, Topaz Labs, Topaz Lens Effects, and hop on in directly to the center focus bokeh. I know that I don't want to sit there and outline him. I'm too close anyways. I just want to have a single point of focus and have it blur out from there. So I'm going to go into my bokeh adjustments and well, I'll probably, I really like that extra creamy preset because it's a very smooth blur. And you can change that and we can choose different presets, but I just like to start off right there. All right, so it's in the middle of my image at this moment, and that's not really working because I'm seeing the ground, the uh, cement and bricks here behind the kitten. So instead, I'm going to click on my Effect Center button, come back into my image, and just select exactly where I want the center to be. And I want the center to be right below his ear, in between his eye and ear, basically the area that is closest to the camera. So I'm just going to click right there and it'll just jump over there. Now I'm going to take my transition down to take a look at what my blur is actually doing. I don't need it to be that big of a focus width or focus height, so I'm just going to change that around. 
and then increase my transition. Looks pretty good. And now I need to take that blur mount way down. This is how I like to work with it because I like to make sure everything is placed exactly where I want it to be. And then I take it down to a more natural type of feel, even if it is really heavy. Okay, so here's before, here's after. A lot of blur. I'm definitely focusing in right on his face now. I am going to take my focus height up just a little, maybe even the width. No, we'll take that width back down. All right, so it's very simple to get one point focus. Here's before, here's after. I'm going to say apply, and I'll go through the steps to actually achieve the look that you see in the before and after in Photoshop. Basically, I just went to Toy Camera, and that's a preset. It's one of my favorite presets. I already went to it. It's a soft and dreamy preset. Uh, it is creates a very lovely, warm, kind of antique-ish type of look. But you can also tell that it almost has, an, it has some image, some blurring that it, it, it does to the image. And it's actually called Image Shake. So if you open up your toy camera aberrations, if you don't want, you can just take that camera shake down. Now I have my focal point back nice and sharp. Here's before, here's after. I'm happy and pressing OK. So it's as easy as that. Here's before, here's after. Now we get into a kind of more creative blur. I'm going to go ahead and turn this background copy off, make a copy of my original background. And to get this more creative blur that almost has movement in it, it has a little bit of uh, stretching of the edges of the, uh, the blur itself, we use the Creative Blur Lens. And that's really trying to simulate, the, the original idea was to simulate more of a lens baby type of an effect. So I'm just going to hop on down to this. And it's very easy to use, just like the Center Focus Bokeh. So let's go down to Lens, Creative Blur. And it's basically the same idea. You have that are going to just be some place to start off with, centered left half, centered lower half. Uh, centered right half, so you can, can use these just to see, give you an idea of how it might affect your image. But personally, I just like to go into my creative blur adjustments, choose effect center. That effect center is really important with these more simplified versions. Click on the area that I want in focus, which is that tulip. And then work with my blur amount. I like to take the blur really up high, remember, because that kind of gives me an idea of how big of a width and height I need. And I'm actually pretty happy with this. I'm going to take the height down just a little. And then I'm going to take my blur back down to a place that I like for this particular image. Maybe something like this. Here's before, here's after. You'll notice you start to lose some edges. You start to um, see some of the edges stretch out to the edge of the image. And that's normal because it is uh, kind of stretching and pulling in that blurred area. It's becoming more of a creative blur than a standard blur. Um, that's really what's happening. And you're losing some portion of that as it happens but that's completely normal. So to achieve the look that I actually um, ended up with in Photoshop, I just applied this type of blur. So again, very simple, one point center focus. And then I went into filter, single tone. With these blurs, uh, especially the creative blur, when it actually changes your it stretches your image like this. It takes a little bit more longer to apply. Just so you know why that's taking a little bit longer than the center focus book I did. Okay, now I'm going to go into that single tone. And I'm just going to go into a, I think I used sunset. Here's before, here's after. The single tone filter is basically 
trying to simulate you putting a colored filter on your lens when shooting. Now you can come into your color tone adjustments and actually be very specific about some of the um, some of the colors that you want to put into your filter very quickly, like so. Now I'm just going to say OK. And here's before. Here's after. So very quick use of Creative Blur. The horse, same idea. I'll just show you really quickly because I saw a couple people say that they wanted to see this. And actually, I will go through the process of the tip has adjust five real quick just so you can see how I got that um, image. I'm going to reset all. I'm not going to work with it. The adaptive exposure to open up the exposure on his face. Okay, that worked pretty well. Here's before, here's after. Not affecting anything too much within the rest of the image, but I really worked on um, just taking that contrast down a little bit, so it opened up the shadow and highlight areas. I uh, took the brightness overall up a little bit and worked on that adaptive exposure to get some localized, um, localized exposure coming out within his face. So now that I'm done with that, I'm just going to press OK. Usually I would have taken um, that and made a copy of it, but I'll make an, a copy of that particular one now. Going into, actually let me step back, step back, make a copy of my background. Do a quick Control F. Let's now make a copy of my adjust background. Hop on into Lens Effects. And it was a very simple use of the where to go creative blur lens effects. I'm just going to click on my effect center, click on the horse's face, and immediately that comes into focus. I'm going to take my blur mount way up and work on my focal point area. And just like that, I'm able to get the correct focal point I want. And now I'm going to reduce the blur. to the amount that I like. And we've gone from here to here in just a matter of seconds. So you can really add a lot of creativity in the blur within Topaz Lens Effects. I'm going to press OK. And let's go ahead and move on to a little bit more complex blur options here. OK, so within the chair, let me show you that before and after. Here's before and after. And Oh, I have somebody asking for the original before and after of the horse. I'm sorry about that. Okay, here is before. This is before adjust or lens effects. And here's after adjust and lens effects. All right, within the chair, image, let me go ahead and turn that off and make a background copy. So with this particular image, we're going to use one of the more complex bokeh effects. Um, and I have somebody who just wrote in what is a bokeh, and it's bokeh or bokeh, however you'd like to pronounce it. Apparently both are correct. <laughs> um, but bokeh essentially is the aesthetic quality of your blur. So if you have really um, choppy blur, you'll make certain bokeh effects. And it was th those original images I was showing you with the highlights, you can really start to see the aesthetic quality of the blur in those highlight areas. And we're going to be discussing that here in just a second. But basically, bokeh is blur. And you can create, you can, um, you can change that qu aesthetic quality using the adjustments that we have for you. 
All right. So center focus was the easy one that we just went through. But what if I wanted to put a more uh, natural depth of field within this image? So for example, I want my forest to be blurred. I want it to be somewhat blurry in my field here in the grass. But I want this front area, um, especially the chair, at least this focal plane, to be in focus. So for that, you would go into a more complex use of our bokeh uh, effects. And today I'm going to be showing you bokeh selective. Bokeh SLR is the exact same thing as bokeh selective. It has the same idea of um, creating a depth map. But it gives you presets for different uh, lenses that are available here for you. And it, so it just kind of uses that specific type of blur. I'm going to control it a little bit more than that. So I'm going to go into Bokeh Selective. You have your actual focus area adjustments and blur area adjustments where you can get very specific on how you like to actually work with your blur. Okay, So with that, I'm going to go ahead and press Reset All. And when I press Reset All, it will get me back to my original. Within Bokeh Selective, we have a six, uh, six uh, of available tabs here for you, adjustment tabs. I suggest going from the top. When you click on Edit Depth Map, your screen will automatically be put into a split screen with your image on the left and then a computer-created depth map on your right. Many times it's a very good depth map, uh, many times it's not. I do go into more specific depth map creation uh, within another webinar that's online already, uh, so I can post about that. But I will go over kind of the essential things you need to know about the depth map. So a depth map is basically a mask, sort of, that's telling the, um, telling the program where you want your blur. If it is black or dark, that means it's closer to the number 0. If it's white, that means it's closer to the number 255. Basically, it's just using the, t um, the tonal scale, the 32-bit tonal scale, 0 to 255, 0 being black, 255 being white. Once you put the depth map in, you can then go into your focal plane adjustments and tell the program, OK, I want my focal plane when it's at 0. That's where I want my focus. If I want my focus up here up front, I would select that. If I want my focus back here in the trees, I would select that. And then the other areas would become blurred. So we're going to go over this particular um, workflow real quick with this image. And then we'll go into another one that's a little bit more complex. Let me reset all again. And then I'm going to open up my Edit Depth Map again. It will just automatically create that for you. Once you start working, though, then it will save all of the it will save all of your um, work during that session. All right, so for this particular image, I would probably use a gradient brush because it's a pretty standard landscape, you know, from your foreground to your background. And then we have this one object here that's just kind of sitting around. And I definitely want this to be in focus. But to start off with, I'm just going to use a gradient brush. It's going to make things easier. So I'm going to click on use gradient brush. And I'm going to keep my starting value for the, my gradient brush at 0, which is black, my gradient ending value at 255, which is white. And I'm going to keep my brush size about 64 pixels. That should work. And I'm just going to drag, click, drag, and then unclick from the foreground to the background of this image. And I'm just going to keep going, doing that, and it will start building this gradient as I do that. A quick tip for everybody, using a really large brush to do this gradient, so you use that is close to 200 or something like that, usually is not going to work as well if you use a medium size to lower uh, size brush. And I don't know why that is, but I find that to be a very useful uh, thing to know about. All right, so now I've created this basic gradient 
in my in my um, depth map. If I now go into my focal plane adjustment and I say, okay, I want to select my focal plane up here at the front. Let me take my blurs really high here. My focal plane to be black at zero. You can also use the button to select focal plane, which I usually do. I'll select up here at the front. I can then select here in the middle. I can then select here in the very back on the white area, and that becomes in focus, and then the rest becomes out of focus, depending on how much to that particular area. That's what I get with the depth map that's currently there, because it's one large gradient. Well, I want my chair to all be in focus, and I still want some heavy blur. So what I'm going to need to do is actually select this chair out of this gradient map that I've already created. The way that you can do that is very simple. Just uncheck Use Gradient Brush. Your main brush menu will come back. And then you can select the depth value that you'd like to paint on, and then the brush size. Well, I don't really know the depth value because I want it to be somewhere in this middle gray area, but I don't know the exact number. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here and click on this little dropper. Once I do that, once I go back into my um, image, I can click on the chair in the image on the left, and I'll just click about right on the kind of front edge of it. When I do that, you'll notice my depth value changed from 0 to 89 over here on the right. So I know that I just clicked on 89, basically a tone value of 89. Now I'm going to take my brush size up just a little bit. When you're doing, when you're actually working with a selection where you've already painted a gradient, it's best to use the largest brush possible for your first few strokes. So you cover up any other uh, problems, or I'm sorry, strokes that you've already done. So I'm just going to click here, and you'll see that it will automatically detect some of those edges. You just have to make a few clicks and then it has been selected. I'm going to take my brush size down just a little and try to grab these legs. Well, we can actually zoom in. That's probably easier. There we go. Okay, I'm just going to paint. It's not super exact here. I'm not worried about that right now, but I want you to get the overall idea of how you would come in and select an object out of this gradient. It's quite simple. All right, I'm just going to clean up these edges of this chair and then work on the areas that kind of became a little bit messy once I selected this chair out. That's specifically these two little red uh, playground, I think it's a slide back there, um, start to become evident because I was selecting my uh, orange chair and it was a similar color. And then a couple things went wrong over here on the top left as well. I'm going to easily be able to paint that back to the right tone by using this dropper again. I'm going to click on my dropper and then click on the area over here on the left that I want the tone to be. There we go. Now I'm just going to come in and actually that was a little too big of a brush. Okay, there we go. It doesn't have to be too exact. <laughs> it keeps coming back. There we go. Okay, I'm pretty happy with that. Let me see. There we go. Pretty good, and so I'm going to come down into, once you're happy with your depth map, you can come down to your focal plane adjustment. And here's where the fun really begins. I'm going to go back to the main image window. And we've already been kind of playing around with this, but when you open up your focal plane adjustments, you'll just select your focal plane by clicking on the button and choosing the tone or choosing the subject you want in focus. I'm just going to click on the front of the chair, and voila. The uh, chair is now in focus, even when the background behind it is out of focus. So now I'm going to play with my actual blur and get it to where I want it to be. Change your uh, blur 
your focal plane by coming into this um, focal plane position slider. It also goes to 0 to 255. If you'd rather play it with it like that, you can just move it around and you can position it exactly where you want to go. All right, the depth of field is going to increase or decrease the depth of field of that particular plane of focus. So if you decrease it, you'll see that smaller and smaller, smaller plane is actually available here for you at focused. And as you increase it, you have more separation between the focal plane and the uh, blurred areas. I'm going to leave it kind of high, this depth of field. And then I'm going to decrease my blur amount for the background to be somewhat more realistic again. This is where you would, this uh, SLR and selective bokeh options is where you would um, be able to create very realistic depth of field um, manipulations or simulations. Now, a lot of people will say, well, this seems like too much work uh, if you're just shoot it that way. Well, I agree. If uh, you can, if you have the lens that you wanted um, and you're able to do this out of the camera, by all means, do it out of the camera. But sometimes it's not as blurry as you thought it would be or it doesn't have um, as smooth of a bokeh effect that you wanted. So this is a really good option to turn to to quickly get very realistic options. Just want a tiny bit of blur up front. There we go. Okay, here's before. Here's after. I think we did a pretty good job here. Now we have a couple other things down here that I wanted to go over. The lens characteristics. Lens characteristics is how you're going to manipulate your bokeh shapes. I'm actually going to wait one more image and uh, take an image in where you can really see about the lens characteristics. But one thing that you can definitely tell is with the creamy slider, as you take that down, your blur is going to become much harsher, where you'll start to see all these different shapes coming through and your highlights and just keep an eye on that background. And now as I take that creamy slider up, your the blur becomes much more smooth, much more creamy, and just um, a different type of blur. So you can choose which one you're really interested in. I'll work on these in the next image. So let's talk about the focus area adjustments. The focus area adjustments are specifically for your focal plane. So you can sharpen up a little bit. I love the sharpening algorithm in um, lens effects. It's one of my favorites, and it is different than some of our other products. So I'm just going to take that sharpening up just a little, take that sharpening radius up a little, go back to 100%. Brightness, contrast, and saturation. This allows you for even more focus to go to your focal area and less to your blur area. So maybe I want to change up my brightness a little, add maybe a little bit more contrast, and a little bit of saturation, make the chair even more crazy orange. And you can tell it did not affect my blur area at all. But now I can go into my blur area adjustments tab and I can actually specifically work with that area. So let's take that brightness down, take some attention away from that. Maybe even take some contrast down and some saturation down. So our eyes just really go towards that focal point area. All right, so here's before and after. Lastly, we added something just for more aesthetic um, effect if you want to add it in. And that's the vignette and grain. So you can quickly, when you're in your selective, uh, it's just a selective bokeh actually, when you're in this particular effect, you can come in here and quickly add a vignette and add some grain if you so choose. So I do want to add a vignette, maybe just a little. I'm going to come in vignette strength, you take that transition way down so I can see what's going on, take that size up, there we go, and take the transition, little, just have a little bit of darkening on those edges. Here's again before and after. So that's the selective bokeh effect. Let's go look at one more thing and then I'm going to turn it over to you guys. 
please um, type your questions into the module as you're thinking about them. I will try to get to all of them um, that I'm able to. I'm going to say OK. I'm pretty happy with that, actually. And now I'm going to, I basically use the same, uh, the same workflow as far as doing a gradient and then selecting my subject on the focal plane that I needed her to be in. Here's before, here's after. So let's take a look at, we won't do the duck, but now we're going to be taking a look at the highlights here. Let's take a look at this cake. I actually think I have a cake uh, depth map already, so that is good. So I can just load that in really quickly and we can look at the actual lens characteristics tab within that bokeh selective effects. Okay, we're hopping into lens effects. Cancel out and make a background copy really quickly. Okay. All right, now I'm in my edit depth map. Let's see if I have, I think I have it on my desktop. You are able to save your depth maps and then load them back in. This is really important if you are working on a super complex depth map and you've spent 10 minutes doing it. That if you decide that you actually don't like the, the blur characteristics that you've added in, once you've taken it into Photoshop, you can't get your uh, depth map back you're going to have to recreate it. So I'd say if it's an image that you are, you know, you might work on again or it's for a client or something and they don't like how blurry it got or they want some extra blur added in, save that depth map and you can just immediately um, load it in like I'm about to do. I'm going to press load mask and let's hope that it's there. Yes. Okay. Cake. I'm going to open that up. Now it doesn't do anything here, but when I go to my edit depth map, that is the depth map that I had created earlier. So let's go down into our focal plane adjustments. And basically, I just want the cake to be in focus. So I want my select, I'm going to go to, here we go. I'm going to select my focal plane and just click on the cake. Take my background blur up. pretty significantly. And now that I've done that, let's take a look at this lens characteristics tab and all of the options you have to actually be able to take control of the aesthetic quality of your blur. Let's go one to one. And actually, I'll take that back down just a little. That's the better option here. And I'm going to be, if you want to keep your eye on these Christmas lights over here on the right-hand side, that's where you'll really start to see some of the um, characteristics of the blur come through. So let's go into lens characteristics. First thing you can do is choose your aperture shape. Currently, it's at a five-blade shape. And this is just replicating whether maybe you're using a seven-blade, maybe five blade, etc. I kind of like the circle, so I'm going to choose circle. I think it's a really pretty um, effect. And then you can change your blade curvature. This is more important when you have <laughs> a five blade or something like that. Your curvature can come in, start to look like stars, or it can go further out and look more like a circle. And you can keep an eye here in this upper left area as well to really see what the shape is doing. You can also rotate it. So let's say we had a three blade, which is going to basically give us triangles. You can rotate that and really control what's going on in those um, in that, that blur area. You can also, let's go back to our five blade. You can also change the creaminess. Now, we showed earlier, you know, it's more of a, just a rough blur versus a more smooth. When you're working with these highlights, you'll start to see something different. You'll really be apparent what's going on. Basically, in the aperture shape, you're beginning to get a negative space within there. So it starts to become an outline. And that's what's creating those sh uh, kind of 
more rough type of blur that's going on. As you pick that up, it'll get smoother and smoother, and you can get very smooth, very smooth transitions. I kind of like it in the middle when I'm working with these shapes because it gives me the most to work with. All right, I'm going to go back to the circle. And now I have some things here as well. Highlight boost, highlight threshold, and chromatic aberration. Highlight boost is just going to allow me to play a little bit more with the aesthetic quality of that blur. So I can boost up the highlight areas. Kind of just make them stand out. Now you got to be careful because some areas go a little crazy. But I say that you can actually work with this highlight threshold as well and open that threshold up to get some crazy highlights working there. And it's just a nice way to be able to um, really draw attention to the highlights within uh, the image, especially if they're able to create these type of bokeh effects. Last but not least, the chromatic aberration is going to Interestingly enough, add in chromatic aberration. Now, a lot of times um, people want to get rid of it. However, this is just to give you a little bit more realistic type of an effect. And so you can go for a more cooler edged chromatic aberration or warmer edged. And it does somewhat, just a very limited amount, it does somewhat um, help if you are have in your image already. All right, so that is the bokeh effect and how you're able to really work with that with your lens characteristics. Let's go ahead and go back to fit. And let me go into the focus area adjustments. I'm going to take my brightness level down to get some detail back into that cake. Contrast down as well. I really want to see some. There we go. Let me saturation up just a little. Sure. Blur area adjustments. I'm actually going to take that brightness down because most of my eye is going directly into that. I'm going to take the saturation down. So I still get the really nice effect, but it's not actually taking over the image. Vignette and grain I could play with, but here's before and after. And by the way, that depth map took me less than two minutes to create. It is edge aware, so when you're cutting out a, an, uh, this, you just have to make a few different strokes and it will actually just kind of fill in those edges. And so it's uh, very simple to create pretty complex depth maps. One thing that I do want to go over, because people ask about it quite a bit, is how does the depth map handle hair? And it actually handles it quite well. Uh, the map itself is is really good at detecting. However, um, such as in this image, you can tell she has some wispy hairs here that kind of go away whenever the blur is added in. However, on the depth map itself, you can see all the wispy hairs that are actually there. So the question is, why aren't they um, why aren't they showing up now? And the answer is because this background is so heavily blurred, it's blurring those pixels, it is going into that hair. So you can't take that away unless you cut out a mask in another program first, such as Remask or another masking um, tool, just so you know. A lot of people say, well, it doesn't handle that very well, the, uh, the wispy hairs. It really does, <laughs> better than some of our other programs, but then because we put blur all around that wispiness, it just kind of blurs right on into those pixels. Thank you so much for joining us here today. I hope that you have learned different ways of adding blur simply and more complex to your image that might aesthetically improve your image. All right, thanks everybody. Have a great day.